Welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul, and thanks for joining me here today. Today we're going to be restoring a Hot Wheels Evil Weevil. This is another one of the cars in the Spoilers series, and it also happens to be one of my favorite cars. We're going to have a lot of fun restoring this car today, so stick around. We're going to have some fun. I've already drilled out the post on the bottom, so let's take apart the car. Now the engines on this car happen to be the posts that hold the car together. Now this car didn't have any suspension in the bottom. It didn't have a way to hold the wheels. So we're going to have to figure out a way to fix that. We take out the interior. Let's go ahead and look at the body. Body's in pretty rough shape. A lot of scratches on here. There's a lot of toning, a lot of paint missing. So we're definitely going to have to strip that down and take a really good look at it. Interior is in good shape. No issues there. Windshield's got a few surface scratches on it, but it's definitely usable. Please notice how the windshield is blue. That's a definite signature that the car was manufactured in Hong Kong. Now, these engine posts, sometimes they come bent from the factory when they get assembled. But we're going to have to do the best we can to drill those out and use them to hold the car together. All right, there's our car. First thing we're going to have to do now is strip the paint. So we put our car in the citrus strip and we get a brush and just start covering it up. I like to try and make sure that I get all the paint out of the inside of the car also because if you happen to be changing colors you want to make sure that all the colors you're going to do are going to match so that way there if you strip out the inside of the paint on the inside of the car excuse me then uh, you'll ensure that all the paint that you put on the car is going to match make sure you make sure you coat everything really well there we go I think we got everything coated really well all right we're gonna have to let that sit for a few minutes several minutes later all right, it's been about half an hour. Let's uh, go ahead and use our brush to take the paint off. Now, the paint remover does work a lot quicker than 30 minutes, but I like to let it sit to make sure it does a really, really good job. Take a good stiff brush, get all the paint off that you can, and then you're gonna have to take it to a sink with some hot soapy water or some degreaser or something and scrub it down really good and make sure you get all the paint out of the cracks. Yeah, it looks like the paint remover worked pretty good. Let's continue. Now we're going to have to drill out the posts on these engines that hold the car together. Now when you're drilling these posts out, these posts on this particular car are very, very small. So I'm using the, uh, the drills in the kit for the 172nd screws that I'm going to be putting into this car. This kit can be purchased at brightvisionwheels.com. Now we're going to tap these engine posts out. And again, this tap set is incredible. The little handle that you get on there is only available at brightvisionwheels.com. Once you get turning on the, uh, the tap here, it's like I said before, it's almost like cruise control. You keep screwing it down until you meet a little resistance and then back it out. Make sure you use a drop of oil on the end of the tap before you start doing this. It will make things a lot easier for you. There, there's one done. Now we got to do the other one. All right, we test fit the screws. These are the longer screws, by the way. Nice fit. 
All right, I think we can pull this off for sure. Good deal. Now we got to clean up the body. This is probably one of the most important parts of getting your car ready for paint is the preparation of the body. Now, if your car has pits and scratches and, and like that in there, you're going to have to sand it down really good until all those pits and scratches are gone. Once that's done, then you can come in here with your Dremel and get it all polished up and shined up. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that little bell below to be alerted to when we get new videos out. Take your time, do a really good job polishing. This one was pretty rough, I have to say, but it worked out well. Using the Flitz polish and my Dremel here, you can see the difference in the body and how nice it's turning out. Look at that shine. If, like I said before, if you take your time, again, folks, you can do this. That's the purpose of all these videos, is to show you folks how to do this yourself. Now, I have to say that I didn't start doing this until I started watching videos from my heroes in this industry or who are now my friends, like Paul from Fat Guy Productions, George at Hodges Hot Wheels, Zach at Bare Metal Hot Wheels. Now we're going to paint. Before we painted, we went ahead and we used some degreaser and we scrubbed it down really good to get all those oils off the car before you paint it. Make sure you do a very, very light tack coat here. This is very important. You don't want to saturate it right away. Take your time. Put that light coat on there. All right, that's looking really nice already. Now it's time to let it set for a few minutes. Let that tack up a little a bit. A little later. Let's continue on with the paint. It is a little darker here because I forgot to turn on the camera to film, but uh, you get the general idea. You've seen enough of my videos. When you're using the Spectre Flame paints or you're using the Nitro Flame paints available from brightvision.com, follow the manufacturer's specifications to the T. Now, I've seen a lot of folks that do videos and they got their own way of doing things. I'm not going to knock that. Whatever works, it works for them, it'll work for you. This is just how I do it. All right? So again, I'm not going to criticize any way that anybody does any of their procedures. I might not agree with it, but again, if they get the results and they get it done, that's all that matters. There's, there's no written book for this. Now it's time to polish up the engines. A little bit easier to hold them in this little portable vise that I got. Using a little bit of Flitz polish and my Dremel, we're going to go ahead and buff out that um, those little engine blocks to a nice shine. And the way they looked before to the way they're starting to look now, they're going to be a lot nicer. Looking good. Now, if there's anything you folks would like to see in future videos, please don't hesitate to write something in the comments down below. I've got a lot of cars and uh, I'm always looking for some good ideas. And who knows, if you happen to give me a good idea and I use it in one of the videos, I may just send the car to you just for suggesting it. I do appreciate it. And I do appreciate my fans, so please subscribe, like, Share it with your friends. I have so much fun doing this. This is like therapy to me. But I've got some other customs I'm going to be doing in the near future. It's fun doing the restorations, but I want to do the stuff where I cut cars apart and put two or three cars together. 
Um, this is uh, this is a lot of fun for me. Engines are looking real, real good. When you get them out of the vise, wipe them down real good, and then take a uh, toothbrush and get you some of that degreaser again, and scrub them on down, and get rid of all that extra polish that you got on there. looking real nice I happened to find another suspension set up in another car that I had so I stripped it out of that car and we're gonna put new wheels on it now these wheels happen to be the cap wheels these, these are not my favorite wheels but they still look good and they're really easy to replace so take a razor and pop those old caps off and then put the new ones on. Just snap right in place just like you see here. I got these wheels again at Bright Vision. The web address is brightvisionwheels.com. Now they have a wheel selector on the website where if you don't know what wheels need to go on your particular car, you go on there and you select the car, it'll guide you to what wheels you need. Now I went ahead and I put that suspension in there after I changed the wheels and super glued it in place. Now once I did that because I wanted to make sure it was going to set I used this Insta set and gave it a couple little spritzes on there and it immediately set up that super glue so I didn't have to wait for it to dry. I got this at Hobby Lobby but I'm sure you can probably pick it up at Amazon.com now I've got the base all done I've got the body all done windshields ready to go interiors nice and clean and the engine posts are all polished up looking nice all right let's put it together and do our reveal and this is what we started with a Hot Wheels Evil Weevil approximately 50 years old. I remember playing with these cars when I was a kid and like I said before this was one of my favorite ones. This was a lot of fun. It really really was. And this is what we got to. Man I tell you what that paint job in my opinion turned out fantastic. Now folks like I said you can do this yourself this is how I started like I said before I started watching guys with their videos on diecast I started watching Marty's matchbox makeovers and Zach at bare metal hot wheels and Paulie over at fat guy productions and George at Hodges hot wheels and Lee at time riders we little cars and now I'm watching other guys Jamie at Devil's Details Diecast and, and just all these other guys um, they do some phenomenal fantastic work and they're a lot of fun to watch so please also patronize their stations it's sign up for them subscribe for them and uh, have a lot of fun thanks for joining me here today I sure do appreciate it like I said if you have any ideas that you'd like to see please comment down below I would love to um, see what you guys are thinking and have a lot of fun. This is Paul at Diecast Graveyard. Thanks for joining me today.